The president of Mexico, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, has responded to the decision of the Supreme Court of Justice with a new decree to protect the Mayan train. Russian President Vladimir Putin described as inept people with neoliberal thoughts who wants to break the union of Russian people. The 32nd Arab Summit concluded in the Saudi city of Yera with the announcements by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salma of the approval by the participants of the summit closing declaration. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We'll give you the news. Stay with us. President of Mexico, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, though, has responded to the decision of the Supreme Court of Justice with a new decree to protect the Mayan train. After the Supreme Court uh, invalidated the presidential decree uh, in, uh, on the priority deed projects uh, classified as national security issue in 2021, the federal executive issued on Thursday afternoon a new decree stipulating that the construction, uh, maintenance, operation and administration of the main train infrastructure is national security and of the public interest. and we have to protect and shield these works of national security and public interest. Imagine the benefits for the people of the Southeast. Canceled just because of the whim of these corrupt snubs. So the National Security Council took the decision to decree all these works as of national security and of public interest. The Mexican president justified a new decree that protects the privatized work. That is why yesterday the decision was made to issue a decree so that this entire region especially the railroads, ports and airports, become a national security and public interest zone. In El Salvador, several environmental organizations demand the prohibition of uh, agrochemical for agricultural on the global data of action against uh, Monsanto. Movements denounce the operation of the transnational company that produces and markets transgenic seeds. At the same time, they emphasize the need to prevent the use of agrochemicals. The leaders stress the need for Salvadorian state to take measures to attend to the communities most vulnerable to the company operations. In addition, the environmental movements ask for the creation of a commission made up of the main environmental, agricultural, and livestock entities to analyze the situation in relation to the use of agrochemicals and Monsanto's operations. In Uruguay, members of the Gas Union held a demonstration in front of the headquarters of the Ministry of Industry and local oil company ANCAP. The workers have been in conflict for weeks with the Gaza Paraline and distribution company Akharaik. In this context, union leaders are demanding an urgent meeting with the authorities after denouncing the companies for several cases of unjustified dismissal. As you all know, before the bidding process that was renewed as of March 1st, the conditions of the super gas sector in this very seat on October 20th in a case like the Ministry of Industry and at the beginning of this year in a meeting with the majority of the ANCA Board of Directors, it was clearly stated that the super gas workers, and in this case of Portland, with the privatization of Portland, the outsourced workers will not be affected. That was a commitment that came from them. Today, the reality indicates that this commitment did not materialize. 
In Chile, over a decade ago, at them, young Gabriel Boric began his political career as a student leader, which turns him into a public figure. Years later, he ran for president. Today, the students who mobilized under his administration cannot exercise the same right he did. It's been a week since the high school students began a series of protests. Our correspondent in Chile, Paula Dragni, tell us what happened. Take a good look. There you have several burly, heavily armed men lashing out at teenagers no older than 15. One of them even passed out after being shot. Several were taken from the high school where they were protesting in Santiago de Chile, and another one was subdued by police while observing the rest of his classmates. These are students from the reputed Instituto Nacional High School protesting for better study conditions, but the persecution is so great that even their parents are now asking for their identity to be protected. My child was standing in the street. He wasn't doing anything. He was raped by these people who claim their job is to protect us and take care of us. The three students denounced excessive police force, as well as the decision by the prosecutor's office of subjecting them to a detention control hearing on the charge of disorderly conduct. School protests in Chile today is criminalized a priori. Most of the emblematic high schools are surrounded by police forces, as if there was a war that is being monitored with drones, even during recess. That's how they go to classes, and that's how they exit the premises. Parents are trying to denounce this pressure against their children, because besides the direct action by the police, they are resorting to regulations that allow for the expulsion of students considered problematic. We have gathered outside the National High School Institute to say enough with the repression our children are experiencing with these fixed posts of special forces stationed outside emblematic high schools. Please put an end to this protocol that only exposes the students to be repressed or arrested. After two years of online classes, transitioning to face-to-face -face classes has not been easy. Students from this and other high schools are asking for psychological support, for an increase in the number of teachers, for attention to neurodivergent youngsters, and for improvements in infrastructure and food supply. That is why in this petition drafted by an elected commission of the People's Rights Promotion and Defense Corporation, we say that we also need more school supplies and funding. Adding to the repression and persecution, now they are being discredited by the press, who in a macro tone is only referring to demands regarding sex education and condoms or vegan food, and they publish anonymous letters from alleged teachers criticizing the protests, while the students do not hide their identities and are willing to talk. We can't say their name because they are afraid of what might happen to them. That's a dictatorship. The media has shown very little sense in publishing that letter to the person who wrote it. We say, come on, let's sit down and talk. They are creating a dangerous narrative to discredit them. In the last area high school in Santiago, after holding massive meeting, the students decided to take over the campus to make their demands heard. During the march, a civilian car ran over four of those students. We tried to chase the car, but we couldn't do anything because it took off very fast. As I was coming back and another car came by, a Chevrolet, I think, and tried to run me over. There was a lot of risk because the police was following us, closing in on us, and also by standards, and people in vehicles were shooting many things at us, saying that we were skipping classes that it was all lies and blood. That's why we have submitted 
e peticiu. I deeply resent the fact that we students cannot march peacefully because we as minors will be running the risk of being run over or arrested. The truth is that this cannot go on. These were considered as heroes back in 2019 when they awoke the nation to the need of a new constitution. But today, when ironically former student leaders are governing school children, are viewed as that international enemy so useful for progressive democracies. Paola Dragnik, Telesur, Chile. Let's take a very short break now, but remember you can now follow us on our TikTok account as Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back to From the South. Cuba's President Miguel Díaz-Canel attending Havana, the closing of the Business Economic Forum and the Xi meeting for the Cuba-Russia Business Committee. The event has been in session since Wednesday and has been attended by representatives of some 50 Russian companies exploring businesses and investment possibilities on the island and new sign of the will of both governments to strengthen their strategic partnership. During the opening of the Cuba Russian Economic Businesses Forum, the Cuban Minister of Foreign Trade and Investment, Ricardo Cabris, emphasized that the large participation of Cuban businessmen responds to the policy established between the both countries. Stephanie Tremblay, a spokeswoman for the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, told reporters on Friday that operations under the Black Sea Green Initiative are now partially resuming. However, she drew attention to the Ukrainian side, pointing out that the ports are now operating. The initiative began in July last year and is run by a joint coordination center that will represent a deal from Russia, Ukraine, the United Nations, and Turkey, whose headquarters are in Istanbul. Are partially restarting. The Joint Coordination Center today has registered six new vessels to participate in the Black Sea Initiative out of 15 applications. There are currently three loaded vessels that are preparing for inspection in Istanbul. No ships, though, are currently loading at any of the three Ukrainian ports under the terms of the initiatives. Teams from the Joint Coordination Center checked and cleared today three new vessels to proceed to the ports of Odessa and Chornomorsk. We call, on, we call for the prompt return to a tempo of operations that makes full use of the capacities of the three ports and the Joint Coordination Center teams. Russian President Vladimir Putin described as inept people with neoliberal thoughts who wants to raid the union of Russian people. During his speech at the Council for the Interregnate Relations, the Russian head of state assured that people with neo-colonial thinking will not achieve the effect that they seek because they do not understand the strength of Russia's national diversity. Putin points out that his country and its society are under the unprecedented external aggressive pressure at the economic, military, political and information, information levels. Our opponents, I mentioned, people with neocolonial thinking, half which, in fact, do not understand that it is the diversity that makes us stronger. It is in vain that they count on the effect for which they are trying. The President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, points out that the aggressive pressure exerted on the country seeks to divide the harmony of the Russian people with propaganda and attacks on their cultural history. We see that aggressive external pressure is now being exerted on Russia, on our entire society. Almost the entire economic, military, political and informational arsenal is directed against us. The most potent anti-Russian propaganda is deployed. Attacks on our history, culture and spiritual values do not stop, just like attempts to drive a wedge into harmony, into the brotherhood of the people of our country. 
In this context, G7 leaders uh, warn about the fast growth of China's nuclear ar arsenal. In a communique, the G7 stated Chinese accelerated nuclear arsenal uh, build up without transparency and a meaningful dialogue poses a threat to global and regional stability. However, according to a Stockholm Peace Research Institute, China has a stock place of 350 we're ahead far below Russia's with 4,477 and the U.S. with 3,708. On Friday, Chinese Premier Li Qian met with Kyrgyz President Sadir Jafarov in Beijing. Li said China is ready to war with Kyrgyzstan to fulfill to faithfully implement uh, the important uh, consensus reached by the two head of state. He called uh, on the two sides uh, to upgrade trade cooperation and to promote uh, the construction of uh, interconnectivity such as the China Central Asian Transport Corridors. He also said uh, that the two countries should continue enhancing security cooperation to assure a strong security barrier for uh, their development and prosperity. The President of China, Xi Jinping, called on heads of states in the Central Asian region to exploit their potential in trade, economic and infrastructure cooperation. It is important that we continue to set the pace for belt and road cooperation and promote and implement the Global Development Initiative. We should fully unleash our potential in traditional areas of cooperation such as economy, trade, industrial capacity, energy and transportation. China is ready to help Central Asian countries to strengthen their capacity on law enforcement, security and defense, support their independent efforts to safeguard regional security and fight terrorism, as well as work with them to promote cyber security. Telesur English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries through Sarsad. Dial 461 and join our Latin American Alternative Broadcast. One final short break and we'll be right back. The 32nd, uh, welcome back, my pardon. The 32nd Arab Summit concluded on Friday in the Saudi city of Jeddah with the announcement by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salma of the approval by the participants of the summit's closing declaration. The summit uh, discussed uh, the Palestinian and the Sudanese crisis as well as uh, economic strategies. The event was also attended by the Syrian President Bashar al Assad. For the first time in 12 years, among the, decision, the decisions adopted were to maintain the commitment of member countries to reach a solution to the Palestinian caste, not to allow foreign inter interference in the internal affairs of the Arab countries and the Sudanese affairs. During the Arab League summit, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad held an important meeting with Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salma. The two leaders discussed bilateral relations between the two brotherly countries and developments in, in the Arab arena in light of the positive atmosphere in the inner Arab relations reflecting a collective approach towards common visions that culminate in the Jeddah summit. al also met with the Vice President of the United Arab Emirates and head of its country's delegation to the summit, Sheikh Mansour bin Sayed Al Nayan. Both leaders discussed bilateral relations between the two nations and ways of promoting joint actions. During the recently closed 32nd Arab League summit, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad took to Florida to reiterate that the region's problems have 
They predict thousands that have accumulated during decades and that it is the black responsibility to help solving them, leaving each country's internal affairs to be handled by its people. The Syrian leader also expressed he hopes that the summit presented the beginning of a new era of cooperation and solidarity among the Arab countries. As for the issues that we are witnessing daily in Libya, Syria, Yemen and Sudan, and others in various locations, we cannot treat diseases by treating their symptoms. All of these issues are results of larger problems that weren't previously treated in terms of discussing them. We need to treat the cracks that have emerged on the Arab scene during the past decade. For the Arab League should restore its role in healing wounds, not deepening them. What's most important is to leave internal affairs to be managed by its own people. And we all have to prevent external interference and help only when specifically asked to do so. We are holding the summit while the world is turbulent, but hope is growing in the face of Arab regional and international convergence, which has been culminated in this summit, which I hope will mark the start of a new stage of Arab solidarity to achieve peace, development and flourishing in our region instead of war and destruction. On Thursday, about a fifth of all prisoners in Zimbabwe were released under a presidential amnesty a few months ahead of crucial general elections. A total of 4,270 Indian Muslim men were let out according to the African country's correctional service, which describes the reprieve as a novel gestured by the president. The move brings down crowding in the country's more than 50 detention centers, which have capacity for about 17,000 people, but uh, held more than 22,000 before the amnesty. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also use us on our socials, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English, I'm from the South, I'm Ana Marrero, and thank you for watching.